Hello and welcome to Stein. My name's Andy. Thank you so much for joining me. We're going to worship together and pray, listen to the scriptures and think about what it will mean to us today. Have you got the sheet? You don't need this, but it's a, you know, it's a good way to keep track of your thoughts and to record stuff in an analogue way. I'm quite a fan of analogue writing stuff in an age of digital um, technology. I think there's something good about writing stuff by hand on paper. Anyway, shall we pray? Let's start, as always, with our prayer of approach. Loving God, we're here to worship you. Help us to remember that you're here with us. May we pray to you in faith, use technology to connect with each other and listen to your word with eagerness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's sing our first song today, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. So oh. 
now's the time when we share a bit of our of our own stories and today if you're watching live I invite you to type into the comments if you're watching this later just think this question through do you have status symbols do you have things which could be clothed possessions titles which afford you respect in the in the eyes of other people okay so what are your status symbols if you won't mind sharing it'll be useful to get us thinking about this now okay let's go thank you for sharing let's sing breathe the breakthrough prayer together. God of love, God for all, your purposes are more beautiful than we can possibly imagine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Help us. Let go of all that holds us back. Open our lives and our churches to new seasons of humility and faith, of change and growth. Shake us up with the good news and show us the way. Amen. As always, I invite you now to type a word or two into the comments of why God is particularly good for you today. Go. Let's sing. Dear Lord and Father of mankind.
sins to God. When I say, Lord, have mercy, will you reply, Lord, have mercy. Let's pray. Father, although our ways are foolish, you are kind. We're sorry for the ways in which we have brought hurt to ourselves. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We're sorry for the ways in which we have brought hurt to other people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We're sorry for the ways in which we have hurt the planet. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And we are sorry for the ways in which we have hurt you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And now, brothers and sisters, hear the good news. God loves you with an unquenchable passion. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Thanks be to God. Let's turn to the scriptures now. Today's passage is Matthew 23, um, verses 1 to 12. John's going to read it to us today. As always, I invite you and encourage you to listen out for words or phrases that jump out as John reads it and make a note of them because they may be the bits that the Spirit is wanting to bring alive to you today. So let's hear the good news according to Matthew. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Therefore, do whatever they teach you and follow it. But do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they teach. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on the shoulders of others. But they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. They love to have the place of honour at banquets and the best seats in the synagogues, and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces, and to have the people call them rabbi. But you are not called to be rabbi, for you have one teacher and you are all students, and call no one your father on earth, for you have one father, the one in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant. All who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. So let's try and unpick this this story. At the start of the service, I ask you to share your your things which were your status symbols the ways in which you kind of get respect from other people and i think we're all guilty to this to some to some degree so i want to introduce you to this book which is going to guide a lot of our thoughts today this is alan de botton's status anxiety i came across this quite a few years ago and i i, I think it's brilliant um, alan de botton's a philosopher and he's got a real knack of putting his finger on things which we all kind of know but making it clear and explaining what's going on. And so the whole book is about our pursuit of status and how that can cause us great anxiety. And I think this is the heart of what's going on in this gospel passage as well. So his, his central idea is that people are unsure 
of their worth. People are not sure how valued they are of their place in the world. And we build our sense of self-worth largely on the amount of respect and admiration and love we get from other people. And status is a way of getting more of that. When we have a high status in society, we get more admiration and respect and love, and that makes us feel good. So his, um, his central idea is that people are driven by a need to boost their status in society, and it's fraught with anxiety. So let's try and unpick some of that. So I'm going to bring in a little Sylvanian family's friend. Uh, he's clearly dressed very snappily. He's got the latest fashions on, blue stripy trousers, are very much the thing. I wonder if this is a thing for you. I wonder whether you try to impress others with your fancy clothes. Maybe not blue stripy trousers, but whatever is um, trendy. I wonder if you're the sort of person who has to have the latest labels. Um, no, because when you have clothes with the right label on, it, it kind of gets respect from people because at least some people will see that and think, oh, wow, they've got that. They're, they're clearly wealthy. They're doing well in the world. They can afford that. Clothes act as a status symbol. Perhaps it's through kind of presenting a model of an ideal family. wonder if that's how you boost your status in life. Perhaps it's through sharing pictures of family outings and meals. That's how you let people know that you're winning in life. Perhaps it's through things like technology. Perhaps the sort of phone that you have is really important to you. Um, I don't know which iPhone is the latest release, but perhaps if you're the sort of person who has to get the latest iPhone when it comes out because everyone will be impressed that you've got the latest one. That's, that's another way that we can get respect from others. Perhaps it's through having a fancy vehicle, um, whatever that may be. Perhaps that's another way that you, you get respect from people by having a, you know, a fancy car that, that other people think, well, they're doing well in life if they can afford one of those. Perhaps it's through things like social media, likes and followers perhaps increasingly today we measure our status by the metrics we get from social media which is a very new thing all of these things kind of boost our status and make us receive more admiration and love but it's a very fragile existence because all of this can very easily go and we're one of Alan de Botton's sort of crucial ideas is that we're all suffering from increased anxiety because we're worried about how to get up the ladder and we're worried that we're going to slip down compared to other people because other people are playing the same game. There's that the phrase keeping up with the Joneses which expresses this, the idea that if we get a, oh I don't know, if you get a, a new iPhone 12, it's a big outlay, it will bring you a lot of happiness and joy perhaps but then there'll be an iPhone 13 and someone else will have that and so you immediately fall down the ladder. This, this is called status anxiety and in the passage I think Jesus is talking about status and status anxiety. He talks about religious leaders who do everything for show. They try to get respect from other people. Um, he talks particularly about people with large phylacteries and large tassels. Now, a phylactery was a box that um, sort of very core conservative Jewish people wore on their wrist and their head, which had a few verses of the scriptures in them. Um, and not necessarily anything wrong with that, but they, it says they enlarge their phylacteries. They get in an arms race. They try and make them bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger so that people think, wow, that person's got a huge phylactery on their head. They're really taking God seriously. That's the sort of thing which Jesus was criticising. And the tassels. And people then wore a cloak. And on each of the four corners, you had a tassel, which was a reminder that God is with you. And Jesus had tassels on his cloak too. When the, the story of 
the lady who was bleeding and touched the edge of Jesus' cloak. That was his tassel she, she grabbed hold of. So Jesus had tassels. There's nothing wrong with tassels and nothing wrong with clothes, um, phones, cars, being on social media. All of these things are kind of okay, but it's the pursuit of making them bigger and bigger and getting more and more dependent on them. That's, I think, the core issue that we need to be aware of. At the end of this, Jesus says, don't exalt yourself, don't lift yourself up because you'll be humbled. All of these things will come to nothing. Your iPhone 12 will one day be a piece of junk. Your car, which is beautiful today, will one day be a rusty thing that's too expensive to repair and it will go to the scrap heap. All of the ways in which we seek status, they eventually don't work. We, we have to constantly keep up and it's possible to plummet in status in society. The, we hear in, in the media all the time of people who had it all and suddenly through making wrong choices or bad luck or whatever, they, they lose everything and come crashing down in their status. And ultimately, we're all going to die. None of this comes with us. None of it goes with us. Instead, Jesus says, be humble and you will be lifted up. Remember, the, the core message of this, the core root of the problem is that we don't know how much we're loved. And we try to get love and respect and admiration from others through showing them that we're, we've got a high status. I think Jesus is wanting to say, you are deeply loved as you are. You were made in God's image. God chose you as you as he wanted you to be, he knitted you together in your mother's womb. You are inherently of great worth. It doesn't matter what you wear, it doesn't matter what you drive, where you live, any, all of that stuff does not matter. Instead, you are deeply, 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 deeply worthy just because of who you are. You're a child of God. And let's be people who are humble and just recognize that and let that provide some of let that provide the sense of self esteem that we need not chasing after things for show i think that's what this passage is talking about in the the breakthrough prayer we said that we pray for god to help let us go of everything that holds us back and the pursuit of status through status symbols can be something that holds us back. We need to be prepared to let go and be opened up to new seasons of humility and faith, change and growth. Amen. So let's sing a classic great old song about the inherent worth in each of us, this little light of mine. Just watch and pray Saturday told me just watch
Let's pray for the needs of the world. When, when I say, Lord, in your mercy, will you reply, hear our prayer. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you created us in your image, that you regard us, you see us with eyes full of love and admiration. Help us to be humble. Help us to be people who place our self-worth in you. We pray for everybody who is struggling at the moment with anxiety, with pressures to compete in the world, with financial worries, with ill health. Will you draw near to them and heal and restore them? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have authority in the world to govern. May they know that they are a person and that their position, their status, their role is a gift. Help them to govern with humility and with a heart and a passion to improve things for the poorest. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for the church. Help us to be a place of humility. Help us to be open, to have low barriers so people can come in and make their home among us. Forgive us when we've got too obsessed with status and wealth and being different. Help us to be humble. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we thank you for all those who have gone before us and died in Christian hope. Will you bring us with them to the place of eternal joy where we finally realise how much you love us? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let's join with the Lord's Prayer to finish. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. So may you know that you are infinitely valued by God. May you find your worth in him. And may you be less attached to the things which provide status in the world and the blessing of God. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and stay with you forever. Amen.
Take it into her side.